Thank you, Lord. Father, we give you praise because you always cause us to triumph. We thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. That just as we seen the Patricks be blessed. And we saw Brother Mike get his blessing today. We know that you also have something in store for all of us. And so the reason why we shout and praise God is because you are great. And you are greatly to be praised. We love you, Lord. Be with us in these next few moments in Jesus' name. Somebody shout amen. Amen. God bless you. You can take your seats. Amen. Praise God. Well, we're talking about the spirit of generosity and how God is going to bless you to the point that we can have overflow. Now, let me tell you something. The reason why we were able to bless not just Brother Mike, but some of y'all don't understand every week, and I got staff that can support me on this, every week we have to help out families. We just don't, we just don't get on Facebook and promote it, but we just bless people because we know it's, when you're blessed, you're supposed to be a blessing. Okay? Just this week, because of the teaching last week on generosity, just this week, our tithes and offerings in one week went up 20%. Come on, somebody. Now, what does that do? That means that we can do things like be blessed and help people. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. There's so many people that are going through hard times right now. But the church, not the government, the church is going to be the answer to every problem in our community. Let me, let me show you this as we continue to talk about the spirit of generosity. I'm tackling this subject because I want you to understand what God is about to do for us. Well, we are generous. 2 Corinthians 9 verse 10 through 11 says, God is the one who, who provides seed for the farmer and then bread to eat. In the same way, he will provide and increase your resources and then produce a great harvest of generosity in you. Yes, you will be enriched. Somebody say, yes, I will. Yes, I will. In every way so that you can what? Always be generous. And when we take your gifts to those who need them, they will thank God. You saw, you saw the Patricks put their hands up and say, to God be the glory. Did you see Brother Mike put his hands up and say, thank you, Jesus? Because when you are generous, you will thank God. That word generous means to be liberal in your giving. That means to be carefree, liberal in your giving, unselfish, charitable, benevolent, bountiful, kind-hearted. Acts 20 and 35 says, I have showed you all things, how that so laboring you ought to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Saints, I believe that a, a spirit broke out, of a praise broke out in this, in this building because we gave. And when you give, it releases a blessing. Now, I'm telling y'all right now, the reason why I'm teaching on this is because I want to shift the narrative of the church. I don't want people to be thinking that church is just a big old place where we just take, take, take. No, the church is going to be a place where we give, give, give. Matter of fact, yesterday in 20 degree weather, we handed out 400 boxes of food at our Jonesboro campus. People out there, come on, lining up to get food in the cold weather. And we had volunteers standing out there with jackets and scarves and hats on being a blessing to the community. Because when you are blessed, you're always going to be a blessing. Somebody shout, I received that. Okay, now, now last week we talked about how we can be generous in our tithes and offerings. I gave you five points last week that I want you to keep in your mind. Number one, I told you, you give to what you love. Okay, you give to what you love, and that's found in John 3.16 when God gave his best. I also told you, I, you must give to God first before you give to anything else. Okay, you always set something aside for the Lord before you give to anything else. I also taught you about tithe. What is a tithe? It's a tenth, and that tithe belongs to the Lord. Saints, when we give in our tithes and offerings, we're able to bless other people just like you saw today. Uh, also, you bring your tithe into the house of God. You always make sure that you bring your tithe to the house of God so that way the house of God can be uh, able to do what it needs to do. And then you lay aside something on the first day of the week. Always put something aside. How many of y'all do that just normal? I, I put something aside for the Lord, okay? But I also want to talk to you today about uh, tithes and offerings because there's a misconception about tithe that sometimes we think that just because we give a tithe that automatically we just receive a blessing. Now, blessings follow obedience, okay? 
But y'all need to also understand that just because you give a tithe don't mean that it just automatically sets you up for something. Okay? When you give a tithe, how many know you got to be a good steward over the 90% that you got left? So that way, God can continue to increase you and do more. Now, here's what I want to do. I want to change the way you think about giving. Don't give to God because you want a blessing. Give to God because you want to honor Him. We don't give to get. We give because He's already gave. Y'all feeling me on that? Okay? Passing, this is, this is what you got to do now. You got to pass the test. Okay, because tithing is a test of your heart. It's a test of your heart. Look at Proverbs 3, verse 9 and 10. He says this, honor the Lord by giving him your money and the first part of all your crops. Then you will have more grain and grapes than you will ever need. He says when you give, it's about honor. And remember I told you what an honor is last week. I told you honor is about respect. I honor people. That means I respect them. How many of y'all honor God? So you respect, you say, God, because, because uh, everything that I have is because of you, so I honor you. I thank you in advance. Somebody say amen to that. Okay, now, a lot of people, I'm just giving you some teaching so you can get more educated in this area. A lot of people consider tithing to be connected to the law. A lot of people say, well, you know, that, that was under the law. We ain't under the law now. We under grace, praise God. Okay. But I showed you last week how Abram gave tithes to Melchizedek before there even was a law. The law came when Moses, but Abram came before Moses. Abram did it because he honored God because he knew that he did not win that battle because of him. Saints, I believe some of y'all could say this today. There are some things that happened in my life that should have took me out of here. But because God had his hand on my life, Come on now, that thing didn't take me out. And so what I do is for every battle that I win and for every challenge that I overcome, come on, I honor God with my, with my finances. Watch this, not to get something from him because he's already given me something. So I do it because I honor. So watch this, tithing and giving your offerings is not a law thing, it's an honor thing. Somebody shout, it's an honor thing. I honor him with this. Now, why is this important? Because some people will try to pinpoint you with the law and try to get you, uh, you know, well, we don't do this. Well, listen, Jesus came to fulfill the law, okay? Matthew 5 and 17, he told the, he told the uh, Pharisees, he says, don't misunderstand why I've come. I did not come to abolish the law of Moses or the writing of the prophets. No, I came to accomplish their purpose. That word fulfill means to finish or complete. In other words, watch this, God put a law in place, but I came to bring it to its purpose. This is why it's here. It's not for you to beat people up, but it's for, it serves a purpose of honor. Okay, look at Hebrews 10 and 16. He says, this is the new covenant I will make with my people on that day, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their what? Hearts, and I will write them on their minds. Saints, you got to do something because it's in your heart. Hallelujah. Now, just in case you need to have a scripture to hold on to so you can say, well, Jesus didn't say nothing about that. Well, I found the scripture in Matthew 23 and 23, where Jesus talks about this. Look what he says. He's talking to the Pharisees. He says, what sorrow awaits you, teachers of religious law, and you Pharisees, hypocrites? He says, for you are careful to tithe even the tiniest income from your herb gardens, but you ignore the more important aspects of the law, justice, mercy, and faith. Can y'all read this next line? You should tithe. Yes, but do not neglect the more important things. Here's what Jesus says. Yes, you should tithe. But watch this. The tithe don't replace how you deal with people. He said just because you tithe don't mean you can't show justice to the folks and you can't have mercy on people. In other words, don't use this tithe to get what you want out of people. He says, the tithe is set up to bless the house of God and to honor me. He said, but you have turned it into something that's going to benefit you. Okay? Now, the reason why a lot of people have problems tithing in churches is because a lot of times they don't see the tithe benefiting the church. They see it benefiting the person. Are y'all listening to me? Okay? 
And I, I don't know about you all, but you know, when, when, when you're struggling and then you give tithes and you see somebody just start, uh, 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 and you don't see nothing going on in your church, and, and, and uh, uh, the, the building fund bar is still at the same level for the last three years, that starts, that starts to, to discourage you. And so when you see God's blessings start resting on the people of God and the church of God, then it, then it helps you to tithe. So I want you to understand that Jesus said you should tithe, but he says when you tithe, make sure that you show mercy and grace to other people as well. Y'all received that? Amen. Somebody told me one day, Pastor, it's hard out here. I can't afford to tithe. Can I give you something to think about? Put this up, y'all. You will never be able to afford to tithe until you tithe. Okay? That's a big thing. Able to afford to tithe until you tithe. The enemy will always work on you with that. Okay? So you just got to do it now. Why am I talking about this? Because this is part of what we do as believers. We worship, we praise, but we also give. Okay? I want to give you just a few things to help you understand what the tithe does. Number one, the tithe supports the work of the ministry. Look at 2 Chronicles 31, 5 through 10. I'm going to read out the message translation. You can see what it says. It says, as soon as Hezekiah's orders had gone out, the Israelites responded generously. Hezekiah was the king at the time, y'all. And he says, first fruits of the grain harvest, new wine, oil, honey, everything they grew. They didn't hold back, turning over a tithe of everything. They also brought in a tithe of their cattle, sheep, and anything else they owned that had been dedicated to God. Everything was sorted and piled in mounds. They started doing this in the third month and didn't finish until the seventh month. When Hezekiah and his leaders came and saw the extent of the mounds of gifts, they praised God and committed God's people's Israel. Hezekiah then consulted the priests and Levites on how to handle the abundance of offerings. Azariah, chief priest of the family of Zadok, answered, From the moment of this huge outpouring of gifts to the temple of God, there has been plenty to eat for everyone with food left over. God has blessed his people. Just look at the evidence. Saints, when you do something for the Lord, you're going to have some evidence to see. You, we, the, the evidence that God has showed us here at Tabernacle of Praise, I mean, we have seen God do some tremendous things as the church has grown and has developed, and we've seen the evidence of souls being saved, of people getting healed, delivered, and set free, of us being able to do things for our community because we are blessed to be a blessing. All right? Here's, some, here's another thing that the tithe does. The tithe releases provision for my house. When I'm standing in the need of something, I don't know how he does it, but God, sometimes, I don't know, I'll be trying to figure out, is, is, am I going to be able to get out of this? And some way, somehow, God steps in. Look at Matthew, Malachi 3, verse 10. It says, bring all the tithes to the storehouse that there be meat in my house, and prove me now here with, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you don't have room enough to receive it. When I was coming up in church, they used to say, pour you out blessings. But this scripture says, pour you out a blessing. All right, in other words, watch this. The blessing that rests on your life, amen, it is not a house or a car. It's an anointing for you to be able to prosper and be blessed in every area of your life, okay? The word blessed doesn't mean to get rich. The word blessed means to be successful. In other words, watch this. In every area of my life, because I put God first, he's going to allow me to be successful in my career. And come on, in me raising my children. He's going to allow me to be successful in anything I do and anything I put my hands to do. Matter of fact, some of y'all that are going for some job interviews, because you put God first, watch your name go to the top of the list. Watch how God positions you for greatness. Watch how God will give you wisdom and insight on how to raise your children. Watch how God will give you wisdom and insight on how to deal with a challenging situation uh, at your job or in your family. Why? Because when I position myself in God and I put him first, a blessing, an anointing comes over me that I can prosper and be successful in every area of my life. Watch this. Money is not everything. People got a lot of money, but they ain't successful. They ain't prospering in every area. They got a lot of money, but they got headaches. Come on. They got stuff going on in their body. I'm declaring a decree in the name of Jesus that something supernatural is about to happen in T.O.P. and everybody watching. Come on. That the blessing is about to, come on, fall on you and your family that everywhere you go, it's just things going to start working out. Can somebody declare a decree that this is going to be the year that everywhere I go, things just going to start working out. Praise God. Come on. That's why the Bible says you'll be blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed when you come, and blessed when you go. That means things will just start happening. 
You know, folk be talking about me. Uh, I had one guy call me, you know, and he, he's a preacher that's been around here a long time. You know, they be talking about you, McBride. I said, oh, okay. Like, like what, am I supposed to, you know, what am I supposed to do about that? Yeah, they, they, just, they just try to figure out, you know, how, how, all these locations, how, how y'all doing all of that? I said, now, are they saying that or are you saying that? <laughs> Whenever somebody come to you talking about they, always ask, who is they? And I told him, I said, well, you know, God has been faithful to us. I said, I give God all the praise. I give God all the glory. Yeah, but McBride, what else you doing? I said, I'm not doing it. I said, I'm giving God praise. I give God glory. I said, I preach every morning just like you preach. I said, but I don't know. Just thank God for the favor. Okay? Stop trying to explain to people why God is blessing you. Stop trying to explain to people why you got promoted and they didn't. Stop trying to explain to people why you're doing well and they not. Don't, you ain't got to explain to folks. Praise God. You know why? Because you weren't there when I was down. You weren't there. Every, see, Lord have mercy. People look at you now, but they don't know what it took. They don't know the nights you had to cry. They don't know the tears that you shed just to get into a happy place, just to get into a space in your life where you can smile and say, thank you, Jesus. There were some days where I couldn't smile. There were some days where tears was coming out. There were some days where I couldn't say blessed assurance. There were some days where I couldn't sing. But when God turns it around, you got a reason to give him glory, and you don't owe anybody any explanation because when God God steps in. Oh, you can lift your hands and say, to God be the glory. I want to know, do I got a few people up in here that can say, I can't explain why God keeps blessing me, but I refuse to try to minimize what he's done in my life. Okay, and here's what I found out. Everybody is not going to be happy about you being successful. Now, I could camp out right here, right now. Everybody ain't going to clap. You're going to find out who your real folks are. Y'all ain't going to help me preach up in here. Come on. When you get a blessing, the people around you should rejoice. Nobody should be trying to investigate what's going on in your life. Baby, I don't know how you got there, but I'm just shouting with you because I remember the time when you didn't have this, but look what God has done. The tithe releases provision for my house. The tithe releases protection for my house. Look what he says in verse 11. He says, I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast the fruit of He says, I'm going to hold back the enemy. He ain't going to take your stuff. He ain't going to take your family. He ain't going to take your, come on, I'm going to rebuke the devourer. He's not going to take your peace. He's not going to take your joy. Hallelujah. Some of y'all don't even understand. When you do that day you set aside something for the Lord, amen, the, the enemy tried to come at you, and, and there was a 10-foot angel standing at the door. He said, no, you can't come up in here. I will not be depressed. I will not be down. You ain't going to have me under the blankets for three days. The devil is a liar. Somewhere I'm going to find me some joy. The tithe releases provision, the tithe releases protection, and the tithe releases, releases promotion too. Promotion for my house. Malachi 3.12 says, all nations shall call you blessed. For you shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. Why is this important? Because at the time the children of Israel were going through a curse. They were going through a situation where nothing was growing, nothing was producing. And in that time, if you don't have nothing growing, nothing producing, people say stay away from that country because God, God ain't with them. Okay, because the, uh, uh, the prosperity of a country is based off of the stuff, the, your crops and your cattle. That's how they just, they, and things ain't growing. They say, uh-uh, stay away from that. Here's what God says, I'm going to turn your fortunes around. He said, because you put me first, he said, not only am I going to restore, come on, provision and protection for you, but he says, I'm going I'm gonna, I'm gonna to put you back in a place of promotion where people are going to look at you and they're going to envy you because of you being blessed. He says, they're going to look at you and say, that is a delightsome land. 
I declare a decree that people are going to look at you and say, that's a delightsome family. Man, that's, wow, look at how, look at the favor on that family. Praise God. Well, when my wife and I first moved out here in the year 2003, we just followed the Lord. The Lord told us to leave California, leave the Bay Area. We live in San Francisco, California. Leave the Bay Area and start, and start the ministry, okay? We drove out here in our 1992 Ford Thunderbird, okay? And that thing was on a wing and a prayer, okay? We drove out here, didn't even know where we were going to stay. We were just following the Lord. We, we took Genesis 12, and we said, God, we're just going to trust you, okay? We, we, we knew we had an aunt. Y'all, some of y'all know her, Minister Crawley, down there. In, she uh, stays down there in, in the southern part of Williamson. So I said, well, if, I, if, if we get out there and things go wrong, I could go stay with her. Guess what? When we got out here, things went wrong, so I went to stay with her. <laughs> How many of y'all, when you're following God, you just, you, 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 you just, you, 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 you're following. You're like, okay, this is this working out, this working out. Sometimes God don't give you the whole road. He give you the end, but it, the, the middle part, you got to walk by faith. Okay? So we, we get out there, and, and, and then all of a sudden, uh, I'm like, man, what's going on? We don't have a job. The job I thought I had went down. The job my wife thought she had went down. I got three children, and, and, they're, and they're all young. Got my wife here. We out here. We ain't got no place to stay. We ain't got no job. God, we trusted you. We honored you. Where are you at? Has anybody ever been there before? God, I did everything I was supposed to do. Where are you at? Okay. Car was cutting out on me. Praise God. Spent up all my, all my, all my money on, on the gas, and I remember my last tank of gas at the Shell gas station. Okay, and I put it in there, and uh, how many of y'all know when, when that flash come up where it says, please see attendant? That, that don't mean they want to talk to you. That means you ain't got no money. When that please see attendant came up on the screen, I didn't even go inside and talk to him. I got back in the car, and, I, and that thing was on E. And, and my wife said, we all right? I said, yeah, we all right. Men know what I'm talking about. Yeah, well, everything's good. Okay? And I was just sitting there, and my daughter was in the back, Ashley. She had to be around five or six at the time. And all of a sudden, she starts singing this song. Shake, shake, shake. Shake the devil off. Shake, shake, shake. And she just started saying it. And then she got to the last part. In the name of Jesus, shake the devil off. Then she said, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of... And she kept saying it, in the name of Jesus. And she kept saying it, and I'm just driving, crying. My wife said, you all right? I said, mm-hmm, just worshiping. <laughs> I was crying because I couldn't shake the devil off. Because I drove from California to Georgia telling everybody, God told me. And when I got here, I couldn't shake them off. But my daughter kept singing, in the name of Jesus. She sang it from Powder Springs all the way down to Griffin. In the name of Jesus, shake the devil off. When I got down here, my aunt said, y'all come on in. I told her what was going on. She said, don't worry, God go make a way. I got up the next morning. I said, God, I need you to make a way. Because if you don't make a way, I am going back to California. Okay, the next day was Sunday. I got, we got in our car, we drove up, and I said, we need to go to church. I need to hear from God. We were on our way to go to a, a new birth, because that's the only church that was on BET at the time. So I said, well, let's go on a new birth, okay? But we couldn't get there, because it was a long way away. I said, well, let's just go on Terra Boulevard. Let's see what we got. And Divine Faith Ministries had just got into a new building, Pastor Battle, and, and, and he had all these flags out there. They were doing some celebration. I said, well, let's go on in here. We got on there, and he started preaching about faith. He starts saying, sometimes you got to trust God when you can't see him. I'm just sitting there like, Lord Jesus, have mercy. <laughs> so he said, he said uh, uh, who want to join the church? You know, so I told my wife, I said, hey, listen, I, I, I think this is where I need to be. I just need to be where I can hear a word. She said, well, come on, let's join. We join the church. We get into the back area, and, and there's a picture in the back area of a person that we knew from San Jose, California. She's a deaconess at the church, Sister Cassandra. We, she go here, oh my God. So we, we said, well, well, we'll connect with her when we can. We go outside the church, and guess who's in the parking lot? Sister Cassandra. Oh my God. You know, we had a reunion out there in the parking lot. Then she says, my pastor needs to meet you because I know you do music. 
and my pastor needs a minister of music. I said, okay, well, we can meet him. She said, well, let me go back inside and get my purse. She go back inside, get her purse, and guess who's in the sanctuary? Pastor Battle. She said, Pastor Battle, you got to come out here and meet him. Come out here. Oh, praise God. Well, listen, I want you to come back tonight so you can, you can play the organ for me tonight. I said, well, praise God. Listen, if I ain't never played an organ before. <laughs> Y'all ain't going to help me preach up here. Come on. I, I was doing Billy Preston. I was standing up on it. I was... I was, I said, I'm going to play this organ today. <laughs> when I got done playing the organ, here's what he said. He looked back at me in the middle of a service, and he pointed at me. He said, God told me to hire you full time at my church. He said, report to work tomorrow. 24 hours ago, I was getting ready to go back home and call it a day. But God stepped in, come on, right in the nick of time. And if that didn't happen, we wouldn't even be here right now. I'm here to let you know sometimes you are 24 hours away from God turning something around. And what you got to do is keep trusting God. Hey, I feel like I'm prophesying to somebody. Somebody get ready for a 24-hour turnaround. Come on, I'm going to put God first, and when I put God first, he will order my steps. And because of that, put the slideshow up, David. Because of that, I want y'all to see how God blessed. Then years later, we started the church with six people in our living room. We started, we believe God, six people in our living room. Then after that, we went to the storefront right there on your left. That's how T.O.P. started. Danielle is here. She went to the store from right there on the left. Then after that, we went to the Zach Hidden uh, location. That's where we really started building ministry. For five years, we stayed. Okay, that's the first slide. Can you go to the next slide? Then the next slide. Here we are now. Ended up here. 20 acres of land. Come on, transfer to us. Come on. We didn't have to go to a bank. We didn't have to go to a lawyer. The guy put the keys in my hand, and we sitting right here because of the favor of God. I don't know why this stuff happens to us. I'm just telling you, the favor is on us. Come on now. Go to the next slide. Come on. Then we started the Early Learning Center. Now we're serving 80 kids, and we have the lowest rates in the county. Go to the next slide, because y'all don't want to get happy off of this. Come on. We started the Christian Academy right now. Come on. Go to the next slide. Come on. They don't want to get happy. Now we're going all over the world, spreading the gospel. We got a missions team that's headed to Belize. Go to the next slide. Come on. Y'all don't want to get happy. We started the Jonesboro campus. Come on. That's having church, and we're saving people in Clayton County. Go to the next slide. Y'all don't want to have church. In the midst of a pandemic, we built a gym. Come on, when everybody was going down, because of your generosity, we were able to build a gym. Why y'all ain't happy? Go to the next slide. They don't want to. Come on. We planted our third campus in Griffin. Come on. In the midst of a pandemic. Come on. We did that. Come on, because God is faithful. Are y'all listening to me? Now, I showed you all those slides, but I'm here to let you know there's something that's about to happen in your life because you are generous. Go to the next slide. God told me to say, your slide is next. I need 50 people up in here to get on your feet and start clapping your hands because your church got a slide, but you got a slide. Somebody get ready for the favor of God to rest on your life. Everybody that believes your slide is next. Lift you up in your hands and start worshiping and thanking God. And I'm a secret of Boshata. That's something supernatural. It's about to happen for every home and every family. Under the sound of my voice, y'all get ready. I feel like something's being released right now in the atmosphere. God, what you did for my wife and I, what you did for Tabernacle of Praise, God, you're going to do it for us. What you did for the Patricks this week, what you did for Brother Mike this morning. We, we, we're not serving you because we, we want you to do something, but we're doing it because we honor you. And because we honor you, you said that you would open up the windows, pour out a blessing. All we're doing is holding you to what you said, that you said that you would pour out a blessing that we don't have room enough to receive. God, I thank you. That because we and we are faithful to you, you are always faithful to us. And so, God, I declare a decree that somebody's slide is next. 
that somebody is about to walk into some favor. And I give you praise. Somebody just worship the Lord for it and thank you for it. God, we give you praise because you always cause us to triumph. You always cause us to win. And Father, I declare the creed that the days of the struggle are over. Hey, hey! And that we are walking into blessings and favor that you will release on your people. God, do it for us right now. And we give you praise and we thank you for it. And we call it done. I said it's already done. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.